If you had to choose one goal for your business on social media, which one would it be? Audience growth or getting clients? The answer matters a lot more than you think, because if you have one goal versus the other, you should be employing completely different sets of strategies. If you have been trying to do both, that's just the beginning of your problems getting clients online. Hi, my name is Ina Coveney. I'm a business coach and I specialize in monetizing tiny audiences. I'm also the host of the Get Clients First podcast where I teach you how to make money in your coaching business even if you have a small audience. I also interview the top coaches in the world about how they got started. And right now we are on day four of the 10 Days of Hot Leads series. This is a completely free email and audio course that I created for you to know how to get clients on social media. And it really starts with what your strategy online is going to be. I get questions from my clients about this all the time. Ina, should I be focusing on creating reels or carousels? Should I be showing up on stories or should I be doing lives? There's also always this like and or proposition because the truth is that as human beings, we can't be everywhere. The moment you try to be omnipresent, the moment you try to be on all things at once, is the beginning of the end because that is the path to burnout, especially if you don't have a team of 10 people who are minding every single part of your strategy. So in today's topic, in today's day of hot leads, I want to talk to you and introduce you to the concept of Instagram neighborhoods. I'm going to show you what each part of the Instagram app is meant for for and whether they're going to help you or not in your particular goal, whether it is audience growth or getting clients. Have you ever heard of or read the book called The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan? So the idea of that book is that if you want to make anything grow, if you really want to make strides in something, you really got to have a very single-minded focus on that thing. Now, this is a lot harder to implement in reality than it is idealized in that book, but they really do have a point. When you think about how much energy you spend on social media, how much energy you're spending on your business... If you were to funnel, to channel all of that energy that you're spending on all these different places and doing all of these things, if you were to funnel all of that time, resources, and money into meeting one specific goal, you would probably get there a lot faster. So if your efforts are split between wanting to grow your audience and wanting to get clients from social media, you're not going to end up doing any of them really well and you will burn out from trying to do all things at once. Now, I may be biased because I teach you how to get clients on social media without having a big audience. So you're going to hear me say a lot that you do not need a big audience in order to make six figures in your business. And I'm, I'm proof of that because my guess is that you want to grow your business. And when you say grow, you mean money. You don't mean how many followers you have. If by the end of this year, you have made $100,000, or by the end of this year, you have acquired 10,000 followers, which one to you would be the best measure of success? Probably the money, right? Because that shows that you're helping people, that you're making an impact, that you're making a difference. There's all of these things that come out of you wanting to make that money. You are actually doing what you love for the people that you love, and you're seeing the results in your bank account. But if your goal is followers, you are missing the mark. You have no idea how many influencers are out there really struggling to make money because they focused on the audience growth piece first. What do we say? We get clients first. Huh? That's the name of the podcast, right? This is what we do. We get clients first. Everything else will come in second. So I wanted to show you if you are going to spend time on Instagram, you really have to focus it based on the goal that you have. So I'm going to assume from this point forward for the remainder of this conversation that your goal is to get clients online, regardless of the size of your audience. 
all right, that you and I are on the same page, that making money, doing what you love is a lot better than making no money, but amassing groups of followers that you don't even know who they are or where they came from. So I want to introduce you to a new way of thinking of Instagram. Rather than thinking of it as an app that you have to satisfy all of its tentacles, let's think of Instagram as having different neighborhoods, okay? So I am in Boston. So Instagram is greater Boston. And the Instagram features are all of the suburbs around it. And not every suburb is the same. Each suburb has its own culture, its own format, its own personality. And you don't live in all the suburbs at once just because you live in greater Boston. Each one is very unique. So I'm going to introduce you to four the four primary neighborhoods of Instagram and how you can use them more effectively for your particular goal. Why don't we start with live streams? And just to give you a quick summary, we're going to cover live streams, your feed, stories, and reels. All right, we'll get there. Let's start with live streams. So what do I mean with live streams? He's going live on Instagram. This is long form video. All right. There is one thing that you need to know about long form anything. Number one, uh, did I just say that there's just one thing that you need to know? Let's, let's just make it two, okay? Because I came up with another one. Number one is that the people who are watching, the people who are listening, the people who are still with you five minutes and 10 minutes in are super warm leads because cold leads that don't care about you are not going to spend that kind of quality time with you. And the second thing is that if your goal is to get clients, live streams are amazing for this because of reason number one, right, that we just said, that your warm leads are actually listening to you talk in this live stream. That means that they are ready to hear your call to action. Live streams are amazing for nurturing your audience and for setting yourself up as an authority in your field. They're hearing you in their ears talk at length about a topic that they care about. Therefore, you are the teacher, you're the guide, you are the leader. So think of live streams as your very own TV show. Be entertaining, be educational, add value to their life, show them how it's done, and then give them an option of how to dive deeper with you. Give them a call to action. Tell them what they can do next with you. Don't be afraid to do that, especially on live streams. You should be able to tell everybody who's listening, hey, by the way, I know that you care about this topic, but if you want to learn more, do this, right? Like if I were here in this live stream, in this YouTube video, if you're watching, if you're listening to this, you know what's the first thing I'm going to plug? You guys probably already know the one thing that I want everybody to do, because we covered this on day two, when we talked about your link in bio, I told you what is the one thing that I want my audience to do. And that is to sign up for my masterclass where I teach them how to create a six figure coaching package from scratch, right? By the way, that is available to you at sixfiguresfromscratch.com where the number six, it's an actual digit number six, sixfiguresfromscratch.com. That's what I want my people to do. So if I'm going to be doing a live stream, you bet I'm going to be talking about that masterclass and telling everybody, hey, by the way, that is available to you anytime you need it. So go and grab it. Don't be afraid to put in calls to action when you're doing long form video. That is the place to do it. It's a great place for sales. If you're not doing live streams already, challenge yourself to do one a week. And don't forget to promote it. Don't just pop into Instagram whenever you feel like it or whenever you're ready. Promote it. Tell your audience that, hey, this is what I'm doing on this date at this time. This is a topic we're talking about. Make sure to use that feature of Instagram where you can promote your upcoming live in your profile. Do that. Do that for a while. Get people used to seeing you and hearing from you and being the voice of reason in their ear. So that's a live stream neighborhood. Now, let's go to the feed neighborhood. The feed are the posts that are right below your profile on Instagram. Now, with this one, is this good for getting clients or is this good for audience growth? I'm going to tell you, in 90% of the cases, your feed is a great place to elevate your authority. Therefore, playing a part in you getting clients. 
in a much smaller percentage, you would be using the exact right hashtags, the exact right topics, and being shown on the explore page, which would increase the size of your audience. But that is like the 10% of the cases. You have no control over what goes into the explore page. If you did, you would make every single post appear on the explore page. You do not have a say on that. So I would say, don't think of your feed as an audience growth uh, machine because really it's going to be in a very small percentage of cases that you're going to get pushed to a larger audience. Instead, I want you to think of it as the place to elevate your authority. So on your feed, make sure you use all the different types. Photo posts, carousels, text posts. Get yourself a canva.com account completely for free and start making look in your feed. Great. Go to other people's whose accounts you love, whose content you love, and see what are the pieces that you can just take and make your own. No plagiarism here, please. Do not copy and paste from other people's captions. And if you are going to replicate somebody's trend, make sure you credit them in the captions by tagging them. Make sure you're doing everything in an ethical way. It's okay to borrow ideas online. That's all the reels world, the, the carousels world, the like every single one of these neighborhoods, they influence each other. They're not complete silos. So it's okay to take ideas from others, then make them your own, give credit to the original creator, and you will be totally fine. But if you see somebody's feed that you absolutely love and you want to replicate that vibe, try to deconstruct it. Spend some time in that feed and figure out what is it that makes this feed so amazing because I I want that vibe in mind, and then just go to Canva and create it yourself. You can do this. You can make anything happen online. Now, here's just a quick, quick tip about this. Yes, your feed helps you elevate your authority, but it's not going to be a great place to promote your offers. And here's why. These feed posts have probably a three second lifespan. And if you're going to be using it, we want to make sure that it's getting your people to believe that you are an authority at what you do rather than a promotional post that most likely your people are not going to be ready to hear yet. Your feed is not set up for a warm audience. It's set up for a cold audience. So if you want to warm them up, talk about your accomplishments, be inspirational, give them your philosophy, give them your teachings. That's what your feed posts should be about. Up next in our next neighborhood is stories. I love my stories. Your stories are the place to sell, are the place to warm up your audience. People who are watching your stories, same deal as with a live stream. If they're watching your stories and they're hanging on to your every word, they are warm leads. Don't be afraid to talk about your programs in your stories. Just like I told you, please don't talk about your programs on your feed. It is totally fine and you have carte blanche to do that in your stories. Now, you are essentially training people along the way how to interact with you in stories. So make sure that you're including stickers, right? We talked about this on day one when we were talking about engagement. On day three when we were talking about engaging through your stories and creating compelling stories, right? And, and I even gave you 100 post ideas for engagement. You can still go grab those, by the way. If you didn't yesterday, go to 100 postideas.com. That's 100 postideas.com and grab 100 ways to post in order to interact with your audience. And there's some great ideas for stories in there. So make sure that you're using stickers, that you're giving people a reason to engage back with you and make it entertaining. Make it something people would actually want to watch. Don't only talk about your products, your services, your programs, your promotions coming up. Don't just talk about that. Tell people the things that they need to hear. Now, here's one thing that I hear a lot in this online world, and it's that I don't want to appear salesy, right? Or I don't want people to feel like I'm baiting and switching them, like I'm attracting them with my personality. And then I'm like, hey, but here's this thing to buy, right? Raise your hand if that's how you feel right? They're like, oh, I don't want to bait and switch them. I don't want to be your salesy. I hear you. You know what the cure for that is? For you to train your audience to hear about your offers. If they know that your offers are coming, 
right? And you are still providing value and you're still helping them with other things and they still like your personality. They are going to listen to them. They may not act right now, but they're not going to unfollow because of them. They're not going to unsubscribe because of them. You got to train them to hear what you have going on. That is the cure for you not feeling salesy ever again, because they know they're, they're grownups, guys. They know what they're watching. They know what they're listening to. It's like when you watch the Super Bowl. Some people will listen to the commercials because they're fun, right? When you're listening to your favorite podcast, you know that there's going to be ads, right? Sometimes you fast forward through them, but you know there's going to be ads. Just because there's ads doesn't make you stop listening to that podcast because you're getting a ton of value out of it. Treat your stories the same way. Make sure you're giving people a reason to keep coming back to the stories and train them on the fact that you do have stuff going on and they need to know about it. We have arrived at the last neighborhood, which is reels. Yes, they will build your authority, no doubt, but the primary goal that reels serve is audience growth, but not if you're posting just one reel a week. That is not going to do anything for you. The only way that reels can really work for you in terms of audience growth is if you're posting a lot of content all the time for months and years at a time. Yes, it sounds hard. I'm sorry. I'm not going to coddle you. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. If you want to grow on Instagram, you have to put in a whole ton of work that may or may not pay off in a week, in a month, in three months, in six months, or in three years. You got to know that. If you are spending all your time on Reels and you're starting to feel burnout, I get it. That's when you go, okay, Ina, I hear you. Why don't we go ahead and get clients in? <laughs> if this audience growth thing is not going, can at least make money? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And that's why you're here. That's why you're watching the 10 days of hot leads. So you can start getting hot leads. So I need you to know that Reels is an amazing audience growth tool. And very few people actually accomplish that feat because it is hard. It is so hard. You have to come up with great content that is perfectly niched, perfectly within your scope, multiple times a day for months without end. So you need to know that about audience growth, that that's what it takes, that nobody's going to tell you, okay, you can, you can just grow your audience one reel a week. Nobody's ever going to say that. that. Those words were said by nobody ever. If you want to grow your account, you really got to put in the work on reels. Now, can you use reels to elevate your authority in order to get clients? Sure. Make sure that you look like an authority. Make sure that you're giving value, right? All of that stuff is great. It basically could replace one of your feed posts. Perfectly fine. But do not expect audience growth if your real strategy is not hardcore. Sorry to say that. That's just the way it is. So if audience growth is truly your goal, this is where you're going to be living. And you're going to be posting a reel a day at least, the minimum. That's the minimum effort, by the way. One reel a day is the minimum effort if you want to grow your account on reels, all right? Now, here's a little warning for you. And this is something that we covered in a past episode of this podcast, is that it is very possible that one of your reels will go viral. And if it's not the right kind of reel with the right niche message, you may be amassing an audience of people who do not care about your topic. So you really got to keep them niche because you have the potential for any of your reels to blow up. And when they do... Are you going to attract the right people to your profile? If there's something that you really, really want to share, but it's not related to your niche, use stories. The stories neighborhood is amazing for that. Share whatever you want over there. Okay, so how does that feel? Now that you know what each neighborhood is for, your live stream, your feed posts, your stories, your reels, are you ready to create a content strategy that is actually going to serve you in your goal to get clients this year? Yes? Amazing. I would actually love to hear if you had any mind-blown moments. Put them below if you're watching the YouTube chat, the YouTube video. Put them in the comments. Tell me what was your mind-blown moment. What is your big realization? If you're if you're listening to this on the podcast, go to our Facebook group and tell us what was the biggest thing that you learned from this episode. You can get to our Facebook group by going to getclientsfirstpodcast.com slash Facebook or clicking the link in the show notes and go straight there. Tell us, start this communication, start this, start this conversation with us. 
what is it from this episode or from the past episodes that have really shaken and changed how you're going to tackle next year? We want to hear it and we can't wait to see you over there. Tomorrow is day five and we're going to be talking all about finding your content centerpiece. I'll see you tomorrow for day five. And if you would like to get these this entire course in your inbox, you can go to 10daysofleads.com. The link is below. Go there, sign up. It's completely free and you can get every single day of this course delivered straight to your inbox. See you tomorrow for day five.